Um, I'm going to ask you about this in just a moment, uh, Claire, so uh, get poised and ready. But my question to you today, it's got to be about these 1,700 prisoners being freed onto Britain's streets this morning as part of Keir Starmer's early release plan. Uh, your thoughts would be grateful, uh, gratefully received. What is your reaction to that? We're told, same as with, you know, the winter fuel payment, axing, um, it's very, very simple. There is no choice. We've got no choice. Now, to be fair, you know, there aren't the prison places right now, but is it the right choice to release a bunch of people, some of whom are violent criminals, people who've been done for things like GBH, uh, actually being out on the streets today? To be fair, they'd be out on the streets again in a few months anyway, because we now don't put people behind bars for their actual sentence. You only serve, no, not two thirds of your sentence as it used to be, also unacceptable, by the way. Uh, not 50% of your sentence, as it used to be, until earlier this year when the Tories changed it, uh, when they were still in power, but now 40% of your sentence. I don't know why we even bother sending people to prison at all anymore, but uh, 1,700 lags are going to be released, freed onto the streets. Uh, how quickly will they be committing crimes? How quickly will so many of them actually, because overstretched probation service, actually not be able to cope themselves? People going, with the, going out with a few quid in their pocket, one change of clothes, and nowhere to live, no job to go to. What do we think they're going to do within, let's face it, hours of coming out of prison? I'd love to hear your thoughts. What is your reaction? Give us a call. 0344 499 1000 is the number to call. You can text on 87222. You can get in touch on X at Talk TV. You can leave a message at the bottom of our YouTube page. If you haven't had a look at that yet, do please have a look. Calls are charged at the national rate. Text costs one standard network rate message. So, Claire, um, what are your thoughts? No choice, 1,700 prisoners. I mean, the Victims Commissioner, Baroness Newlove, saying... It'll be distressing for victims, who many of whom haven't actually been told that their perpetrator uh, is coming out. A lot of these people will be uh, domestic violence. Uh, they may not have been convicted of a specific domestic violence crime, but likely to be. And Charlie Taylor, the chief inspector of prisons, he probably knows what he's talking about. I'm going out on a limb here. He said there was certainly going to be a risky time amid shortcomings in the prison service of further offences being committed. Well, I think it's inevitable. <laughs> If you are going to let people out without the probation service being around them, without the people themselves being prepared, do they have homes to go to? Because if you're going to end up on the streets, what's going to happen? You've got I 40 wonder. quid in your pocket, all of your belongings in a plastic bag. A drug habit, because if you didn't have one before you went to prison, you definitely have one when Picked you one leave. Up when you were there. So what's going to happen? They're going to need a roof over their heads. There is going to be crime involved in this. That's the only world they're going to know. And they're going yeah. to be released into communities that probably have enough crime going on already without adding more to I'll it. i tell you the communities they're going to be released into, though. They're not the communities that, that mm -hmm. many of the people making these decisions yeah. uh, are, are live in. They're not, they're not going to be released into a halfway house or to a hostel yeah. in Keir Starmer Street or the Justice Secretary Street or Rachel Reeves Street um, or my street or your street but they are going to be released into streets of people who have frankly the, the, the crime blights their lives on a day-to-day -day yeah. basis can't afford insurance can't you know no point even reporting anything to police unless you've got insurance to get a crime number I mean this is and, and particularly I'm particularly worried about the issue with domestic violence we talked about it on the show yesterday uh, yeah. that a lot of these men and they are largely men uh, most people behind bars are men, um, uh, are, are people who have have got a history of domestic violence. They may not have been committed, you know, convicted for, you know, stalking or harassment mm. or, or, or violence against that particular person, but they will have a history of that. They return to these homes. Some of the victims won't even know. Um, you know, these yeah. men just turn up. Often, you know, involves children as well. What do the women do? I, I, I think this is devastating. I think it's only a matter of, I mean... I, I think it's hours, not even days, before yeah. we have the first offence. Yeah, I think you're right. And uh, domestic abusers are not normally jailed for that reason. It is GBH or yeah. aggravated burglary or something along those lines. So those are going to be the people out. And their victims, the ones that we should all remember in this, haven't been prepared. Yeah. So they don't know what their own security yeah. needs are at I mean, the time. And again, it was actually talking about this on the show yesterday. You know, if people talk a lot about oh, rehabilitation and uh, and there's also the issue, of course, of, uh, of you know, of, of of, of you know people should be punished for their crimes and and and, and you know there's a, there's the issue of actually deterrence as well but actually the number one issue despite what all the airy fairy namby liberal lot who seem to be involved in our criminal justice system mm -hmm. seem to think which is you know oh it's all about rehabilitation that's lovely i'd be mean, lovely to live in norway and rehabilitate everybody when we had virtually no crime actually the number one issue is protection of the public yeah. which is that while you are behind bars 
you are no longer shoplifting, burglaring, um, uh, you know, beating up your wife, um, you know, or, 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 you know, getting drunk and, 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 and causing a fight every night in a pub. Yeah. You know, uh, that's why people are put in prison. It is. It's, it's meant to be a punishment first and foremost. You have your liberty removed from you. So if you're but not going to the benefits to society. Of course it is. And that's it. That's mm -hmm. what the government is there for, to yeah. look after the thoughts of society. And if they're not doing that, then they're not doing a very good job. That said, your lot, the Tories, you Equally were a Home Office bad. Minister's special advisor, mm -hmm. didn't build enough prisons. Yep. They, they were giving people, they genuinely have given people longer sentences. People do serve longer sentences now. I know you. We, <laughs> but they don't serve all of it. So you can get a longer sentence, but you don't actually serve it. So it, it swings around about it, isn't yeah. it? But basically, you know, um, but we need to spend a lot more on our criminal justice system. And I know through the austerity years, I know we had COVID, we've had prisoners now locked up 23 hours a day. Mm -hmm. No one, you know, no one is being turned away from a life of crime by, by that. People are, just, people are just basically getting addicted to drugs because it's the only way of coping with that level of, that Mm -hmm. sort of imprisonment we know that's what's happening um uh, but this has been an abject failure by the conservatives as well i mean a plague on everyone's houses on this front yeah they should have been building prisons it's quite obvious they were in power since 2010 what you, have they you can done? build a prison in 14 years. Absolutely can, can. I mean, there are problems with it. There are planning issues with again, it. But to who's not in charge one, of the planning laws? Oh, you know, exactly. it's the government of the day. But now we've got Keir Starmer looking at planning reform, looking at all of this. So he's going to face yeah. the same angry communities now. Do you think that Keir Starmer and his current lot are going to be able to build these prisons and deal with this issue? Because it's not just one prison. We, you know, we need a lot more we places. Many. We need many prisons. I don't think he will. I don't think we'll Neither build do one. Neither do I. Uh, let's have, look. I want to hear your thoughts. Do get in touch. Show three double four four double nine one thousand is the number to call. I'm sure you have something to say about this. I really would particularly like to hear from you. If you work in the prison service, you work in a probation service, uh, in, in, in the criminal justice system, a police officer. I would love to hear your thoughts. Also, uh, frankly, if you've been in prison. Come on, I'm pretty sure some people listening to the show have been in prison. I'm pretty sure some people who work on the show have been in prison, or should be. Um, I include myself in this. No, but seriously, I, I would love to hear from you, your personal experience. You've got real personal experience of this, uh, about you know, what it's like coming out of prison. Um, you know, you don't have to give your real name in those circumstances, I understand, but I really appreciate your call. 0344 499 1000 is that number. Uh, let's talk about winter fuel payments. Um, we've got, in about 45 minutes, we've got Keir Starmer, the Prime Minister, is giving a speech to the Trade Union Congress. Yesterday, they were absolutely, I mean, completely and utterly lampooning the government, attacking the government, accusing him of picking pensioners' pockets and cruelty. Rachel Reeves, the Chancellor, was compared to the Grinch at Christmas. There's going to be a vote today almost certainly is going to be a vote against this axing of universal winter fuel payments to uh, to pensioners, £300 a year. Um, there's also going to be a vote in the Commons, probably around the 2 o'clock is 2.30 mark. Um, and there is expected to be a Labour rebellion uh, uh, on this. But the, the Downing Street are putting out there will be no U-turn. They are sticking by this. And the defence has been from Rachel Reeves, the Chancellor, that actually um, pensioners are going to be better off under Labour because this, they're going to have an extra £1,700 because of the triple lock. But of course, I mean, that doesn't laugh the fact that the, if pen, the, you know, you're putting the pension up by a certain percentage, but if inflation has gone up by the same amount, they're not better off. No, they're not, and the state pension increase doesn't come in until April of next year, so it doesn't really help them this winter yep. if they wanted to heat their homes. So I think it's quite interesting also that... I love the, the if they wanted to heat their homes. A poll today, by the way, more than <laughs> half of elderly say they'll use heating less this year. They will. And somebody is going to die over this. They really are. If this is a cold winter, yep. you are going to find somebody freezing in their home. Yep. And it's a sad state of affairs. But there's an opposition day debate after the main vote in the House of Commons. So this is the first time the opposition, the Conservative Party, have got their act together and they have an up to three hours now debate yeah. on the winter. This is an hour and a half, isn't it, debate before the, yes, uh, before uh, the, 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 the first conversation. Yeah. But here's the thing. When Labour have got a majority like they've got, mm -hmm. even though you'll get the John McDonald's and others, a few, a handful of, uh, of uh, well, w elected on a Labour ticket, but actually sitting as independents yeah. after losing the whip over the Gaza vote, uh, people like that won't vote against. But there's a lot of talk that actually... On a three-line whip, a lot of these MPs, they, they talk a good talk, but actually they'll go through the voting lobbies with the, uh, with the leadership. Yeah. But also, the ones who are a bit braver might abstain. I mean, abstaining is, is, is equally meaningless. Yeah.
Yeah, it really is. And you, you have the rumour of 40 or 50 MPs yeah. uh, ready to rebel. It isn't going to make a difference to the final result, but it is a massive dent to Sir Keir Starmer yes. if that rebellion I mean, comes it, I mean, it is very early on, isn't it? I mean, yeah. We've only had a few weeks of Parliament sitting, <laughs> about summer break, uh, for him to have a big rebellion, isn't it? We should wait and see what happens there. It'll all be happening during Ian Collins' show this afternoon, so do stay tuned for that. Just find just want to very briefly talk about um, the video put out by uh, Kensington Palace yesterday uh, of Kate and the family, uh, Princess of Wales, uh, talking about how she has finished her chemotherapy. They've never revealed what her cancer was, and she's got every right to that privacy. It's extraordinary having to play this out in public, and how she is hoping to do some more public duties. There's no doubt at all, whatever cancer it is, it has been very, very serious, and it's been very debilitating. And she has chosen to spend time with her family rather than, um, you know, do mm -hmm. public duties, and absolutely the right decision, I would say, especially as a young woman, the mum of young children, you yeah. know, that's what they should be going. But uh, lots of people saying how, you know, wonderful this video is. I've got to be honest with you, I thought the video was really sad. It made, yeah. I mean, I felt really, I mean, I'm thrilled that she's chemo is finished. But she, you know, she won't know whether she's cancer free. Mm -hmm. We know that anyone who's gone through cancer or has friends and family gone through cancer yeah. will know this. But um, it, it, I know it was all Hollywood and it was very beautiful. It was very poignant. It was lovely to see the family together and 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 her talking about other people who are fighting cancer and the like. And, and I, I just came away just feeling incredibly sad rather than thinking, oh, good, this young woman and mother of three young children is recovering from cancer. It didn't. It didn't have that vibe to me and I'm am I is it just my interpretation I think it would have probably increased its popularity if they'd included some kind of cancer charity it did occur to me yes I'm not criticizing people can them. she can do whatever she wants she's got cancer yeah. I'm, I'm, you yeah. know, but but yes just sort of like hey what you know what, let's all do a load more let's let's give yeah, a load more to absolutely. cancer charities to improve research absolutely and I think that that would have been really good if they had it you know highlight here that other people don't have it quite as I don't oh. want to use easy as a word, no, yeah. but hers has been a more simpler version of it than perhaps some well, of the Well, we have one of things. I mean, just for, if you're financially able to, you know, not work and your family yeah. can, can and, and your husband can be, uh, wait, take time off from work. I mean, there's lots of, but you know what? The key thing is, you know, ca disease and health is a great leveller. Uh, oh, for, for it doesn't matter how rich and powerful you are yeah. or I I famous you are, uh, you know. I know, and I wish her, I wish her and the family all, all the best. I really do. I just, I just felt, felt incredible sadness looking at this video, and everyone else was talking about it. I'm thinking, what am I? What am I not seeing? But there we are. Anyway, wish wish the family all the very best because I, I wouldn't wish that on on anybody. Just especially especially with young children. I think that's I think as mums, yeah, that's the awful. bit that that yeah. gets me. Right.